Hello everyone, welcome back to a new series of Python application development. So in this series, we are going to make a series of uh, GUI based applications in the Python language using various uh, GUI softwares like Kinter and other uh, software like PyQt, etc. So today we are going to build a simple app uh, with the help of the Kinter library uh, that is a URL shortener. Now what is a URL shortener? So you, there are many URL shorteners on the internet but uh, my favorite one is bit.ly so you can just uh, go to bit.ly.com and uh, you can uh, create an account and sign in and then uh, to uh, create uh, a a short URL okay so let's suppose you have a, a Google form or a Google uh, sheet uh, that you want to share with others uh, if you look at the size of the URL it is pretty big right so it is hard, difficult to type uh, on your mobile phone so in such cases you will uh, love to create a, a smaller URL with the help of such services okay so all you have to do is just click on this create button paste your long URL over here and after uh, uh, you click on create it returns back a short URL okay so now instead of typing that long URL you can actually type the short URL okay so that is how this works but uh, this is how the uh, URL shortener works but today what we are going to build is a customized UI for the bitly interface but with our own programming language that is python okay so we are going to make our own ui for uh, the backend that is bitly okay so let's see how to do that now the ui will be built with the uh, with the library called kinter so uh, uh, i am hoping that it is already uh, there it is already installed on your pc by default with the default python installation so it will be already there so let's quickly go ahead and start designing our app okay now for designing the ui part i am going to use the uh, pygubu designer so let me show you first how i'm going to go about and design the ui and then we will go ahead and look uh, into the uh, actual working of the app how to make the ui part working okay so let's begin let's open the command prompt and in the command prompt first thing you have to check is whether python is installed on your pc so i will just write python version okay and this should return the version of python that is installed minus 3.9.2 similarly you should also check if pip is installed so pip version and that will return you the version of pip that is installed okay if any of these commands fail you can just go to the python website and download the setup again and reinstall and that will give you uh, the um, the both the commands uh, output successfully okay now once this is done now we want to install a new package that is called as the pygubu designer okay so that is used for designing the ui so let's go ahead and install that so i will say pip install and pygubu designer okay so this is the name of the software and you just have to press enter and that will download the package on your pc now the thing is uh, uh, mine is already installed so it is saying requirement already satisfied but in your case it will start downloading the file okay now once this is installed all you have to do to run the uh, the ui software is just type pygubu designer okay and that's it so now if you press enter you will see the ui opens okay so this is the ui for pygubu now to quickly design um, uh, I, I will just go ahead and start with uh, the tk uh, there are two options for all the elements you have the tk uh the elements and the ttk elements okay so the ttk elements are uh, came uh, are the revised versions of the same uh, elements that were there 
previously so i will be using the tk okay so we'll start with the top level uh, element okay so let's start a top level element and you can uh, design your top level element how it should look and everything so let's say i call it as uh, url or let's call it the main window okay okay so i'm calling this as the main window and if you want to change any of these things you can um, give necessary settings but what i want to change is the geometry so i will go ahead and set the geometry to be let's say 800 cross 480 okay so this is what the geometry that is the size of my window is going to be now if you want to change the uh, title uh, other things so you can, you can set it from here so this is where your app name is going to come so let's call it url shortener okay so that is my app name and if you want to change the icon you can change it from here these two options okay but i don't i'm not uh, interested in changing it right now and uh, uh, you can see there is an option for resizable so i will make it to none so that the window cannot be resized okay so it will be uh, of the same size 800 into uh, 480 okay uh, because my size is already small so i am not uh, interested in getting it resized so this is going to be my uh, window so let's look at the preview so let's go to preview and preview in top panel and you can see this is how it looks okay so this is how my uh, app is going to look when it opens now let's go back to designing part now uh, it's a good idea to have ev all your contents uh, not directly inside the main window or the top level window but rather put it inside a frame okay so i will go ahead and in the tk containers itself there is an option called frame you can use a frame or a label frame it is completely up to you okay so let's select a frame okay and the frame comes over here okay so you can see the main window that is top level window is over here and inside that under that you have the new frame okay so uh, let that be um, um, let's call it main or let's call it frame main okay so i will call it that frm main okay so i'm just calling it this and then we will set the height and width to be the same as my original main window so it is 800 is the width and i suppose 480 was the height okay so now it is extending the entire uh, option and uh, entire window if i want i can change the background color of the frame you can select from here okay so let's select some different color let's say i want to select a purple background okay so now this is my uh, bag this is what my background is going to look like okay so that is it so i think yeah so that's done now my main frame is ready so let's quickly look at the preview now okay so this is how it's going to look okay next uh, we are going to go to the main and now we'll start adding the elements okay so right now there is nothing other than the window right so let's go to controls and display and inside this you will find all the uh, ui elements that are there that you can add to your app right so first of all let us add uh, uh, the name of the app over here in the center so let's add a label for that so i have added a label okay and inside the label uh, you can see uh, let's call it uh, lbl let's call it app name okay so that is just a name given to it by me and then you can come down and you can set the text let's set the text to be let's say app sorry url shortener okay so that is the um, value that i'm going to give to the text so you can see that is now getting displayed now let's look at the preview now so you can see right now 
in the preview i get the url shortener okay but it is very small so let's go to our font settings and select the font and set it to let's say arial and let's increase the size to let's say 24 bold and let's change the color to let's say white okay so white will look something like this okay and i will also like to change the let's look at the preview okay so the preview looks something like this okay so i think i forgot to change the color at the top level background yes so i forgot to change that color so let's set it to be something like this okay so now this is my background color let's now go back to label and we will use the same color everywhere for the background okay so let's go back so here also i will put the same color and here also i will go to the background and put the same color okay so now you can see it's looking better so now i have my um, the entire background as one color and the text as white so that uh, makes that you know uh, make it uh, look look a little better right now that is done now i don't like the way it is uh, situated close to the top border so i want it little down so there are two ways of doing this you can do an internal padding by doing pad y over here or you can come to the layout section and in the layout you can uh, change the layout like you, if you want to make it a grid layout you can make it into grid or if you want to remain in pad uh, sorry pack you can keep it in pack now since this software is pretty simple so you don't have to actually do uh, a grid system over here you don't need a grid system so i will be sticking to the pack and here in the pad y i can add a little padding top and bottom and you can see now it's come come coming a little down okay and that's it perfect now let's look at the preview once again and it's looking pretty good okay next we want to have another element where uh, where i am going to actually write the long url okay now for that i will have to have uh, it inside the main frame okay so whatever we whatever widgets that i'm going to add it should be added in the main frame right so let's select the main frame that is the main uh, frm underscore main so this one and then we will go ahead and add the entry widget okay so let's click over there and that adds the entry widget over here and obviously it is very small right now so next step is to increase the size of it okay so for increasing the size first we will set the font appropriate font and then we will go ahead and change the size okay so let's set the font the font size is 12 this is fine and now i don't want to uh, increase the font further so i am just going to increase the width of this particular widget okay so for that you can just go down and you can see there is a width option here this width is uh, in uh, the width of the character okay not in pixels so i can say 80 width so this gives me the complete uh, 80 characters uh, worth of width okay so that is the width second uh, i want to make the text in the center okay so the text should come over here right so for that i will go to justify and make it center okay so that brings it over here and then i'm going to let's say i want to change the text that is the default text uh, default text i will change it to let's say enter a long url here okay so this is what i'm going to put over here so that will come over here so here we are going to put a new url next so that is it for this particular window now here i want to um, before i start with the next widget that i want to add uh, later on when i start the programming part there i need to get whatever value is entered in this text entry box right so for that uh, i can get it directly but uh, it's it would be better if i put all this content in a variable right so for that 
I will come to this text variable part and I will select the type of variable. So because it's a URL, I will select string. And here I will just say uh, the name of the variable, let's call it long URL, okay? So this is going to be long URL, okay? That's it, perfect. Now I am ready to go move on to the next part, okay? So for the next part, let's go back to the main window, sorry, main uh, fr uh, frame and then i can add the next one okay so the next one is going to be a button so on uh, when i click on that it should give me the response okay so let's add that so now that is added now obviously it is very close uh, to the the input element so uh, first thing is let's name the button a little different so let's name it let's call so btn shorten okay so i'm just going to call it btn shorten okay similarly it's a good idea to uh, name each of your elements properly because uh, so you can see i have forgotten to name the uh, the text entry so i will just name that also so uh, l sorry uh, ent long url okay so i have named that so now so our the this will help me when i am starting to code so i will know exactly which uh, which elements uh, are uh, having which you know name uh, in the classes okay so this is a good idea to have the names properly assigned. Okay, so now let's go back to the button and let's see what all things we need to change. Okay, so first let's change the font. Okay, so let's change the font to Arial. A size of let's say 16 will do. And uh, bold and let's change the color to pure white. Okay, so I want, sorry. I don't want the font color to be white, but I want it to be purple. And I want the background, where is the background? Yeah, so background to be white. Okay, so this is how my button is going to look. Okay, so that's it for this part. Now let's see what should be the text. So the text should be shorten. Okay, so now uh, or I can specifically say um, click to shorten. Okay, so this will be my button name. Now, obviously, it is very close to the above uh, widget. So I will go to the layout part and in the pad Y, I will add some padding, let's say 50. And that brings it down. Okay, now if I would have used grid, I could have uh, put it, you know, side by side, but for me, this is fine. So this is my um, URL. Next, uh, uh, I think I am happy with this. Let's look at the preview once. Okay, so this is how it looks. So I can click on this and it should work. Okay, now once this is done, next step is now before I move ahead, uh, for the last element that I want to add, I want to uh, uh, handle what happens when I click on this button. Okay, so that is where all the logic is going to happen, right? So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down and in the uh, specific section, you will see a command option. So here we have to write the name of a function which we are going to design later, but we just have to uh, give a name so that we can call that whenever this button is clicked. Okay. So I can say, um, um, make short link. Okay. So I can call this function, make short link. So this will be my function name type will be simple and that's it so this is going to be my button right next so my lay form is ready next we will go to the uh, add another element now now we have to show the output right now to show the output we can use a label okay obviously but 
I would prefer to use an entry element so that we can easily copy the contents from there. Okay, so let's do entry. So I will add an entry over here, entry element over here. Now I will say short URL for this. So um, short URL. Okay, so that is going to be the name of this element. Next, I want to change the font size. So let's go ahead and change the font size and let's make it 20. So I'm making it a little big so that, you know, it can uh, it can be easily seen how the output is coming, right? So that is one thing. Next, I'm going to, I would like to have it a little bigger, little, uh, yeah, so this is better. Now, next, what I'm going to do is I am going to change this text to, let's say, just to check whether what is the output. So dot com slash some string. OK, so this is how it's going to be visible right now um, if i just do a preview right now you will see this is how it's 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 looking right so i would like to have a little more width over here so let's say a 50 okay 50 is too much let's say 30 okay so 30 30 is also a bit too much so let's go for 55 okay and the justify and i will make it a center so the contents are in the center and I would also like to add a little padding. So I will go to the layout part and add a padding. OK, perfect. Now let's go back to general. Now, uh, I don't want to see this as a uh, white text sort of a thing. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the foreground color to white. OK, so that is the font color. So you can see right now I cannot see the font. But at the same time, I'm going to change the background color also to that color. OK, so that is let me I think I have it in my. Yeah, so I had it in my uh, clipboard. So I just cop pasted it. So I'm making the color same as whatever was there for the background of the main window. OK, so now it looks a little more, you know, subtle. So let's make a preview and see. OK, now still that border is coming, so I don't like that border. So let's see if we can. Yeah, so we can see the border width so we can put it as zero and that should remove the border also. OK, now if I preview, so this is how it looks. OK, now the advantage of using the entry is I can actually copy paste the link. OK, if I used a label, then it would be very difficult. You can see right now this URL shortener text is a label. I cannot double click and copy the text, right? But here in the entry, I can actually copy the text. OK, I can just press Control C and uh, it should work, right? So it works, right? So that is why I have selected the uh, entry, OK? Now we could also do one more thing. Uh, I suppose we could um, state, yes, yeah, uh, let me see read only. OK, so because see right now, if I try to preview it, I can actually change it. Right. So uh, that should not happen. Right. Because it's a uh, URL that is returned and uh, we are just displaying it. So I want the state to be read only so that nobody can change it. OK, so let's preview it again. And you can see that is this is how it's showing. But unfortunately, it is uh, uh, showing this uh, uh, a white color background. That is because this read only background is showing. Right. So let's take that and uh, we will use the same color for the read only background also. OK, so where is the background? Yeah, this background, I will copy it over here and now it's back okay so that's it let's do a preview again and yeah so everything works right so i can copy now my shorten url okay that's it so this is my ui for this app okay so this is the final preview of the ui part so now uh, we are ready to export it so 
now before that let me so this was just for demo purpose so i will just remove that text from here so by default there will be nothing okay so once i click uh, on this button this link will come up okay that is what i am planning uh, now it's time for us to export the code okay so let's export the code let's go to code okay so we were in the design uh, tab right now so let's go to code and in the code you will see three uh, options okay so if you are making a very complex application then you can go for this okay but if you are working on simple application like this one you can go to code script and here you can uh, type your name of the uh, class that you want so i'm just writing url shortener for the name of the class and click on generate okay so just click on save and you can go to the folder whichever folder you want to save it in so let's say uh, i will save it in uh, i have created a folder called url shortener i will save it over there okay so let's save it and that's it so you are ready uh, with your code now uh, before i close this uh, window uh, i would like to do one more thing okay so it may happen that after uh, you write a code you want to add a few more blocks or you want to edit this right in some way you could do it directly from the coding also but then if you want to do it from the ui it is better that you save this ui in in the file that uh, pygubu needs okay so for that i will go to file and click on save so that will uh, come over here and it will create a ui dot ui file okay so this file will be required if in future you want to edit your uh, um, your look and feel okay so uh, i will just say url shortener okay so i'm just going to call it url shortener dot ui okay so let's click on save and that's it so now it is saved now we don't want this so we can close this now okay so let's go to our url shortener so it is in the desktop um, case studies url shortener okay so let's open this in visual studio code okay now here you can see there are two files the python file is the file that we are interested in for making the url shortener and the ui file is for if you want to uh, edit the u uh, your ui in a later stage then you you will need this file okay so right now we are not requiring the ui file but we only need the python file okay so let's open that and you can see the entire code so whatever we designed in the ui over there now we can see in the code form over here okay okay so you can see the advantage of naming each and every widget over here so you can see each uh, variables that uh, each properties of the class is named accordingly the the way we have named it uh, named given the ids the same names are taken up over here so that helps us when we uh, if we want to access any of these properties in a later stage okay now let's uh, come over here now immediately uh, let's say uh, immediately i realize i forgot one thing uh, to do uh, that is to assign a variable for the second entry also okay so uh, the short url entry that we have created so that is i think yeah entry short url okay so here also i needed to enter uh, i needed to add the text variable part but i forgot to enter so let's quickly add that so let me copy this code from here for the long url and i will take this and put it over here and i will call this as short url short url okay so uh, then i will just put it as blank okay i don't want any values as such so let's let me clear that and i will use this okay so i have to put this as okay so that is short url and i want to put this uh, inside the configure block okay so i can either put it over here okay so let's put it over here in the configure block i can say command okay so text variable okay and i will say short url okay 
Now, before I move ahead and write any further code, so I, you can see there are two variables that I have selected, long URL and short URL. Okay, so these are going to be the values of the entries, text entry widgets that we have selected. Okay, now the thing is, these thing, these values have to be accessed from the uh, function that is that we have created over here. Okay, so make short link. So if you remember, uh, when we uh, created the button, so we added a command called uh, you can see over here you can we added a command called uh, short link okay make short link so whenever i click on this button this particular make short link that is this function is executed okay so that means i want to access these values of long url and short url inside this right so for that uh, 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 that will not be accessible right now because uh, it is a local variable okay so to make it a variable which this function can access you can see this is inside a class right so i should make everything uh, inside a, 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 instead of a variable i should make everything as a property that is uh, i should use self in front of it okay so self dot long url and here also i will say self dot long url so that i can access those values inside my function similarly i will do this with over here also self dot short url and uh, where am i using it yeah so here so let me go to the side and let's say self dot short url okay so now i can access those values inside my function okay so let us quickly see if that works so let's print uh, self dot long url okay so let's see when i press the button i can uh, get whatever is uh, uh, typed in the long url entry okay let's run, try to run this and see if it works okay so let's run this and nice so this executes so it looks exactly uh, the way we have created it okay so now uh, i'm going to click on uh, the click to shorten url and you can see i'm getting a uh, pi var zero okay so that means i'm getting a variable right now obviously if it's a variable you cannot do it uh, you cannot print it directly so you have to do get over here okay because this is not a normal variable this is a kinter variable okay so why uh, why i'm saying that because you can see in the variable i am doing this right so i am uh, i'm not take, making long url as a normal prop property right it is like a kinter variable so uh, to get the value of that you have to use dot get method and to set a value or to initialize it with the value you have to use the set method okay so to get the data you have to do get and to set a data you have to do set method okay so that's it now let's run it again and let's click and you can see enter a long url here okay so that means i can read whatever is typed over here so let's type uh, google.com and let's click on this and you will see google.com come in right perfect so that is it for so the, our ui part is working perfectly now let's move ahead for creating our uh, api work okay so basically whatever url i type that url should be converted into a short url okay so for that we have to understand the api okay so this is the bitly uh, web page and i have opened the bitly api reference and you can see how this api works okay so and they have also provided you with a sample code in various different languages okay but i am going to open i am going to uh, scroll down and select python and you will see in python how to use this uh, request or uh, basically this api okay so let me copy everything and come to my python code and instead of printing this i am just going to paste this okay let's do tab and perfect so now i have this code ready now let's start uh, checking what all things needs to be changed okay so first of all i will remove this import from here and put it on the top okay that is the first change i am doing let's go down now for the headers i will 
have to check what all headers are there so in the headers you will see in the header i have uh, the first line says authorization okay now this authorization is very important because uh, this is how we are going to authenticate ourselves to bitly so we have to get this token so right now this token is just a text so we have to replace it with our own token okay so let's go ahead move ahead and find out where will we get the token okay so for that you have to go back to the bitly site and in the bitly site you have to log in with your account and here you can uh, you can just click over here and in the profile settings you can go to generic access token click over there enter your password and click on generate token that will generate the token okay you can see this is the token and copy that come to your code and paste it okay so that is how you will give the token so this is how normally all the apis work so many of them will uh, you will need to have a key uh, authorization key or some other form of a key to be provided uh, for accessing their api okay and some of them may be uh, directly open okay it's completely from api to api it will change okay then this line i'm not going to change keep it as it is then next is the actual data that i'm going to pass okay so there are three things ne i need to pass okay so if, if you look at this this is the long url so this is the url that you want to shorten it okay so this must be uh, this is the url that you enter in the uh the long url entry right so that is this one okay so this long url so we have to get this data right that is first thing so we have to get this data so let's replace this with our own data that we have entered okay so let's add uh let's concatenate over here and let's get the so it is self dot long url dot get okay so with get uh, we will get the whatever is typed inside uh this okay next uh let's go to domain so domain is which domain um, uh, url should be returned okay so that is bitly is fine and group id is uh, uh, you don't have to provide a group id as such because it will take the default group id if uh, if if you if you do not provide anything then it will take the default group id okay so this is fine so this is my data right next i am going to make a request of type post to this particular url okay so this is all given by bitly only i am going to pass these headers okay so these headers i am going to pass and this data i am going to pass okay that's it and then i will get a response okay now this response is what is going to help us find out what what should we display in the below entry box okay so let's see uh, what is the response first okay so let's print okay now uh, let's print response and see what response do we get back okay so let's save it and run it and here let's type a url google.com and let's click to shorten okay so when i click to shorten obviously nothing will appear over here but look at the command window what happens so you will see i'm getting a uh, an object called response okay so that means i am getting a response and the response is 200 that means something we have received successfully okay now the response is a json response okay if you go back to your api you will see the response is a json response so we have to parse it uh, in a json form okay so most of the apis will be in uh, api uh, response will be in the uh, json format right so to parse that into python readable format you will have to do response dot json okay so what this command does is it converts your uh, uh, response json response into python dictionary okay so that is what it is doing so let's print this uh, so run this again and see what is the difference okay so let's close this app and here let's type google.com and click on shorten okay so you can see at the bottom i am getting something okay i am getting the actual 
shortened link and if you see there there is a created date okay so at what time it was created that is getting returned then there is an id some id is getting returned okay then link is getting returned okay so this link is what is the shortened url you can see the value of it okay so this is our shortened url okay then uh, you are getting the long url so the actual url that you are shortening so that is that also you are getting right and uh, that's it so these are some of the things that we are getting now the only thing we have to do is extract this link so now since this is a dictionary we can easily extract this link uh, uh, property from here so see let's see so let's first save this in a variable let's call it res okay and then we have to show this uh, link inside okay so to access this link from the dictionary i will just do res and link okay this is how uh, with square brackets we can access the particular l uh, attribute okay so i have access it now this i have to put it somewhere right so that is uh, that is where that is why we have created a short link uh, 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 entry right so that is where we have to put it right so let's see where is that variable uh, we have yeah so we have created this variable short url so we just have to set that over there so i will do short url dot set and set it to whatever is the link okay so what i'm saying is just set short url to response dot link okay so whatever is this link that is coming that will be shown in the short url okay so let's print this uh, let's close the old app yeah so now let's do http sorry http google.com and click and there you go so you have now a bitly link uh, shortened bitly link now i can copy this go to the browser and i can enter and there you go so now you have your um, app ready right so that's it that is how you can create a simple app uh, url shortener app with the help of uh, kinter library and pygubu designer okay now finally so uh, uh, it's ready the app is ready it's working now you may add a little bit of uh, validation okay so uh, let's see how we can add a little bit of validation so you can see uh, over here before i do the actual request i could do uh, let's say um, i could do if um let's say self dot long url dot starts okay first i have to do get okay so let's do get okay and save this inside long url variable okay so let's say long url now this is going to be a local variable long url okay so if long url dot starts with okay if it say if it's a url it has to starts uh, it has to start with uh, http http colon double slash okay so it has to start with something like this right or uh, so it starts with this or it starts with okay so i can do https or i can do i can do ftp also so ftp right so if this is the case okay so then i will do the remaining thing okay so if not okay if not then i i should uh, uh, just quit it okay so what i can do if long url starts with this or this or this then i will run this entire thing okay so i will just put a tab 
so that this particular entire code only runs if the URL starts with this, these three uh, keywords. Okay, so let's save it and let's run this again. And right now, if I click, you will see nothing is happening, right? Because that validation is kick kicking in right now. But if I do HTTP as let's say google.com and if i click on click shorten url now it starts working okay so you can see you can do a lot of things with this uh, uh, this way of programming okay so uh, you you can first design your ui using pygubu and then you can simply write the code uh, um, for whatever logic you are working on and you can make such simple applications very easily okay now the final thing before I uh, stop this session is uh, basically now once you have the app ready okay so you have this app ready working everything is proper now you want it uh, you don't want it to be a, 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 a python app you want it to be an exe or you want it uh, you want the app to be in a format where you just have to double click and start the app right so that is what uh, we are going to do in the uh, uh, next session uh, where we are going to con see how to convert a normal python gui app to an exe of your particular uh, operating system okay okay i hope this part was clear uh, i will come up with uh, more such um, videos on such uh, how to make such uh, different apps uh, using Kinter library. Till then, have a nice day.